Okay, let's talk about young people. Let's talk about one particular young person, that is Thomas Crook. Now, infamous, of course, for trying to assassinate President Trump at the rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. So one of the things that I read about this young man, I do think we need to talk about this a little bit and hit the comments with your views because they're always important to me. The truth about this guy is, as far as I can see it, guys, is that he was a young man. He was 20 years old. He'd won prizes at maths at school. But something I read was that he was bullied pretty much every single day in high school. He was bullied. And I think we need to concentrate on that a little bit because I do believe we've got some kind of aspect of responsibility here for these young people. No, we haven't got responsibility for trying to shoot Trump. None of that at all. But these people aren't alone. And it might be him today, but it could be another young person tomorrow. So when I was at school, from what I remember, 30 or 40 years ago now, I wasn't particularly bullied. And I didn't bully anyone. But I was aware of people that were bullied. Although I don't believe they were bullied every day. But here's the thing about value, about contribution. And the thing about men especially is we need to be needed. And I tell men in my school, I need you to be there. You know, I need you to step up and to do what we are expecting you to do. And that's very important. You need to be necessary. Women are necessary because they tend to have children and the child needs to be looked after. So the woman feels necessary, but men not so much. And I don't think this man felt necessary at all. I don't think he felt needed. There was nothing for him in his future that he was looking forward to, uh, that he was wanted for, that makes sense. He tried to get into the rifle team, apparently, and wasn't a good enough shot. How ironic was that? Uh, so he wasn't accepted. But I did see this thing that did say he'd been bullied pretty much every day. And uh, I just think that does something to someone where you're being told pretty much by everyone that you're not, uh, you're not good enough to be there. What does that do to you? You feel you have no value anymore. So you can't contribute anything. There's no life for you, is there? What's the point? of being here if we're not it's like we don't have a job now I didn't have a job for a few years I've got a business now starting another business uh, pretty soon another small business but if you don't have a job and when I didn't have a job I felt absolutely the worst I've ever felt obviously leaving the military I didn't work for a couple of years uh, for many many reasons but I didn't I just felt like I wasn't needed Does that makes sense so this guy, and there's a reason, I think, as well. This guy was, obviously, he's bullied. So he's bullied. So because he's bullied, he doesn't go and join the clubs and societies that most people would join. If you do join a club or society, and this is what I remember about the people that were bullied at school when I was younger, was that they weren't, they didn't belong to any sports clubs. They didn't belong to any, they didn't play guitar. They didn't do anything of, well, I would say, of value. They didn't offer anything. If you don't offer anything, of course, then you can't expect people not to, value you because you're not valuable i say this to people when they say you know i don't feel valuable at work i don't feel that my work is valued and i say to them well is your work of value and i don't think this young thomas crook was or felt of any value to anyone apparently as i said he won a maths prize and he was you know he was pretty good he'd he got himself a degree he had a father uh, I remember I read his father was talking about him saying look i just want to get to the bottom of what happened here he seemed to be in a loving family but something along the lines meant that obviously he was going to, this was not going to be something he was going to live through. And I think he knew this when he went to do what he did. And conspiracy theories aside, and I know there's a lot of them going on. I really think we need to look at why this has happened and why it continues to happen. And why I think especially young men feel that their futures are not as promising as they once were we could argue about fourth wave feminism if you want i don't think that's the reason i do feel there is something where women feel that they can do it on their own as it were you know don't need don't need no man i think the man's kind of like well i get that but then what do i do what's my role and the young men i speak to do want to be you know father figures in families husbands and want to be wanted i think we all want to be wanted but want to be needed but of course in order to be needed we have to do something that is needed as i said about value it has to be valuable how do we create value and that's something that i try and do as i said in my school is try and get people to be valuable to the other people in my school so that people want to work with them they want to use that person that person is necessary to them i don't think thomas felt he was necessary and i think that is a really really great shame also, I do think, if I do have a bit of a dig at diversity here, that this is this push for diversity has had a major impact on 
on certain demographics. And in the UK, I think it's had a huge impact on young white men specifically. Young men, but young white men specifically. And I just think it's absolutely criminal that no one's been held to account for it within these organisations that have allowed it to come in, such as, you know, I talk about the Royal Air Force, but in this particular case, the Secret Service in the United States is one that they're really going to have to look at, aren't they? The the woman who's in charge of this has said that she's not going to step down. Is it Kimberly Cheadle, is it? I think her name is. She said that she won't step down, which I think is horrific. I mean, well, OK, I don't know how it works out there, but... A, a, a former sitting president, is, a former president, sorry, has been has been um, an assassination attempt. And if you look at Trump's detail that he had with him, I know it's made up of Homeland Security and everything else, apparently, from what I'm reading. You've got the inner circle, the presidential security detail, apparently, the PSD, the people that are supposed to shield the president with their bodies. They've got plates on and they've got sidearms. And yet you've got three women in there that weren't even the same size as President Trump. So how can you shield them? How can you shield a six foot three president with five foot three women? It's not possible. Irrespective of the fumbling with the sidearm that one of the women was doing, there didn't seem to be much of a acknowledgement of what was going on on that stage. It's almost like they hadn't rehearsed the drills. I'm talking about the localized event, not the distance of the shoot and everything else. Irrespective of that, I think that's been covered elsewhere on online. But those women were there because I believe the head of the Secret Service, this Kimberly woman, said that she wanted the Secret Service to be 30% women by 2030. Now, remember, Mike Wiggs in the Royal Air Force said that he wanted the Royal Air Force to be uh, 20% minorities and 40% women by 2030. No reason. So obviously they've come up through something called Common Purpose, which not many people know about. But type in Common Purpose and have a look at what Common Purpose does. Obviously people, I guess like Rishi Sunak and maybe Keir Starmer and some other people have been groomed from a very early age, the Trudeaus of the world those ambassadors of the World Economic Forum have been groomed early on as these pillars. And I think in doing so, we just, we're not going to get looking. We're always going to get these young people like Thomas Crook and are always going to feel disenfranchised. This is me just speaking. I'm waiting to pick up um, some upgrades to uh, the computer I use for my school. I'm up near Crewe, in fact, the lovely part of the world. Uh, of Nantwich, all those kind of areas I've driven through today, lovely. I just think people are going to feel disenfranchised. The young, young white men, they're going to feel they're four times more likely to commit suicide than women. I find that incredible. That is a thing that we're not really thinking about, or I don't see much about it. Like these people can be so productive if we lent into them a little bit and told them that they were of value. Told them that they were of value, but of course, to be of value, you have to do something that's valuable. And of course, you're less likely to do something valuable if you don't feel that you're of value. So the whole thing is circular, it's cyclical. We all know that, guys. I'm not saying anything against it. I'm interested in your thoughts, so I'll keep this one short. I just think, as irrespective of what Thomas Crook did at the age of 20, trying to kill Donald Trump, I still think that if people had lent in a little bit there, maybe, maybe that might not have happened. Hey, maybe it would have happened. But here's the thing. Maybe if we lean in a little bit more with young men, then it won't happen again. I'm thinking out loud because I'm waiting to pick up my computer. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I do appreciate it, all right? I do appreciate it. Tim Davies, Fast Ship Performance.